Welcome back to Naturally Speaking. I'm your host, Dr. Kareth Powell, chiropractor at Dr. Chris's Natural Remedies. And I'm joined with, by Dr. Chrisinda Morgan, naturopath at Dr. Chris's Natural Remedies. This show highlights some interesting people that are doing interesting things in our community. And I know I speak for Dr. Morgan when I say that we are grateful that you're spending your time with us. We work together to bring content that we know you'll enjoy um, and benefit from. That's the most important thing. So if there's something special you're looking for, you want us to do, you need to let us know. Um, you can find out how to reach us by watching to the end of this show, get the information, get the website and such. But right now, let's get on with the show. Welcome to Naturally Speaking, brought to you by Dr. Chris's Natural Remedies and BR Media Solutions. On today's episode, our delightful Dr. Morgan begins her series on essential fatty acids. The distinguished Dr. David Koch talks about chiropractic, and I review the science, philosophy, and art of chiropractic. This show is jam-packed, so just stay tuned. Yep, so Dr. Morgan, uh, a topic that uh, is important and covers a lot of age groups and different conditions uh, is essential fatty acids. And mm -hmm. um, I understand that you have something that you'd like to share with us about the uh, essential fatty acids. Mm -hmm. okay. We have um, several different groups we're going to talk about how we can use essential fatty acids, what they're used for, and all the particulars of that. So we'll go over the basics first. Okay. Yeah, uh, essential fatty acids are um, useful in many, many, many ways. And so we're gonna group that into four categories. Uh, we're gonna cover the basics first and then we're gonna today. talk about today, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, but we're also gonna talk about focus, growth, development, metabolism, and um, inflammation and how it's useful in inflammation. All right, so the introduction to what is an essential fatty acid, we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Yes. Um, there's lots of common names for that. So we've heard fish oil. Okay. We've heard omega, omega-3, right. omega-6, omega-9. We've heard of flax oil, um, flaxseed. Um, also nuts, you know, different sources from nuts. We have other sources besides the actual um, common names of these essential fatty acids. So um, we have foods we get them from. We also can find them in uh, fortified through other foods. So like eggs and um, pasteurized milk, uh, weight loss shakes. Um, baby formula and obviously breast milk, we have some very essential fatty acids we need that, that come from diet. So when a newborn is, is coming into the world and we're talking about we're going to breastfeed or we're going to formula feed, either way, you can see on those formula uh, canisters, DHA, EPA, all these things. Can you um, get essential fatty acids from anything other than food? Can you make them? No, you cannot make them. Your body cannot make these. So you are dealing with having to get this from your diet. Okay. And there are times when you can get enough and other times when you don't, and it depends on the situation. So you, uh, essential fatty acids are, are they a protein, a fat? Um, they are fats. They're fats. They are fats, okay, they're so healthy fats. They're healthy fats. Mm -hmm. And they're only found in the diet. Yes. We cannot manufacture yes. these. I guess that's why they call them essential. Yes. Okay. And. Um, why do why are they why do we need them? I mean, is it well in every cell of our body? Our body is made up of millions and trillions of cells, and in the in that process, we have things that have to take place every day. So that, with several other components, we need to have good cellular health so that our organs that are made up of several cells each can do their job. Okay, from what I understand, like the the wall of each cell has a lipid layer mm -hmm. so that it protects it, and they can bounce off and mm -hmm. you know. Um, have a transport gradient, et cetera. Uh, the nerves are covered in mm -hmm. fat. Mm -hmm. And are these essential fatty acids necessary for that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and we'll cover more about that too when we talk about fat metabolism, mm -hmm. um, the myelin sheath for the nerve conditioning that we need 
that mm -hmm. we so so greatly can get from essential fatty acids. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, th there's there's a lot of other areas we can use it, but that's you're hitting hitting the nail on the head with that. Okay, so the base. So what are the basics? What would we say the f the five basics are that people need to know? Why we're even having this conversation about essential fatty acids for them is that they can't make them on their own. Mm -hmm. They have to get them through uh, their diet. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't discuss this, and I think now would be a good time to uh, bring up whether or not uh, where what 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 source like what would be a pure source. Uh, uh, I've heard krill oil, you mentioned omegas. Mm -hmm. Do we get those mm -hmm. out of the store um, in a bottle or do we have to find them um, someplace else? It's it's always better to eat them in your food source. So fish, okay. certain types of fish, you um, want to work off the ones that are obviously higher in uh, mercury and, and toxic content. So you mm -hmm. don't want those. So that's going to be like your shark and um, like mackerel and there's a couple of others that are typically higher in, in uh, mercury. Some of our tuna that is more mm -hmm. commonplace is actually high in mercury yeah. too. We have to yeah, watch that. Told that too. Yeah, so you can do it through food, which is ideal, but in, in most cases, um, when you're dealing with illness and condition, you're, you're gonna be having to do something above the mark. So your day-to-day -day intake of food is not gonna be enough, uh -huh. and you're gonna have to supplement with high, higher doses. Okay. So even if you're eating three meals a day and they're nicely balanced and you've got all this great, even if you ate fish twice a day, if you are dealing with illnesses and conditions, you're gonna need some supplementation to match the level of severity of that condition. And an essential body acid it's... can do that. Okay, well, good to know. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Morgan, uh, how, what, what, what thoughts would you like to leave uh, with the audience about the basics of essential fatty acids and uh, what would, how would you like to introduce uh, them to the next uh, portion of this series? Well, you definitely don't want to miss um, all the areas that, that we want to really pin essential fatty acid use to. So we are going to cover those other, those other segments, but we wanted to give you a quick little idea of what the basics were right now and, and just how wide of a scope that it will cover and, and does cover and where, and where you can get this from. Um, so we will do that and we'll cover those areas. Those areas again are going to be um, dealing with function, learning development, um, inflammation, cholesterol. We're going to go to cholesterol actually. Cholesterol. Uh, coming That'll up first. Yeah, time. we're going to mm -hmm. hit that one. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be awesome. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, great. Welcome back to the show. Right now we have Dr. David Koch, professor at Life University, uh, past president at Sherman College of Straight Chiropractic, and uh, professor at Palmer University. Is that correct? That's the whole career for 35 years. 35 years you've been doing it. <laughs> uh, you're also a diplomat in philosophy, is that right? Actually, I actually have two uh, postgraduate level awards. One is called a Legion of Chiropractic Philosopher. And then the second is a diploma in chiropractic philosophic standards. Those are three-year programs, and I've also taught in both of those programs. Okay, all right. And what other <laughs> subjects have you taught? Uh, I've taught extensively. Uh, I've always taught philosophy, mm -hmm. but I also taught spinal anatomy. I've taught toggle recoil technique. I've taught uh, spinal physiology and x-ray physics and radiographic anatomy. All right. But, well. but when it came down to which one did I want to teach, because I couldn't teach them all, I focused on the chiropractic philosophy. So and I've taught chiropractic philosophy continuously for the last 35 years. Fantastic. And that's why I asked you to come and that's why I'm so excited that you're here uh, because the latest book that you have or the, the first book that you wrote, the contemporary... Uh, contemporary chiropractic, an introduction. An introduction. Contemporary chiropractic philosophy, an introduction. Was geared to students and I've read that book um, and I would like you to try to distill that for uh, general consumption. I can do that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> chiropractic philosophy is, uh, is crucial to chiropractic because it, chiropractic is a, is a healthcare field, but it, it comes from a different point of view. Instead of a medical philosophy which says, what, what's your problem and how can I help you fix it? Mm -hmm. Chiropractic has a philosophy that says, your body has the ability to heal. How can I help your body heal? And so that difference in philosophy is based on two things. One the recognition of your body's innate intelligence and that's called chiropractic philosophy it's called vitalism okay. and the second is a clinical approach that says it would actually be better to remove an interference to your body's ability to heal itself 
than to have me as the chiropractor try and step in and heal you for you. Right. So I've been teaching both of those philosophies, but primarily the, the philosophy about the intelligent universe we live in, that your body is not just a piece of machinery. Your body has an inborn wisdom to it. It's the, it's the wisdom of nature and any healing that happens when a surgery, when a surgeon does surgery, the surgeon cuts you up and depends on your body's ability to heal the surgery to even do the good that he does do. So the surgeon recognizes the body's intelligence. When a, when a person prescribes a medication, he's giving you something that's going to change your chemistry, but your body has to be able to respond to that medication and create health with it. Yes. So the pharmaceutical industry actually it finally has to work with the body's own innate intelligence. And we have a special role in that because we recognize that the body's innate intelligence works through the nerve system. And a hundred years ago, the first chiropractor discovered that your spinal column can interfere with your nerve system. And so for a hundred years, chiropractors, based on the philosophy that it's the body that heals itself, mm -hmm. has been correcting these misalignments to the spine that are impinging on the nerve system and preventing the body from being able to heal itself. And we call that adjusting the spine, and that's why we're all in business, and that's why we've helped so many people. Well, Dr. Cope, based on the information that you've given so far about the philosophy of chiropractic and understanding that the body has an inborn intelligence to heal itself, regulate itself, and grow, uh, what type of people do you think choose to be under chiropractic care? That's a great question, and it, it talks both about our history and also our odd place in the healthcare professions. It kind of works like this. When chiropractic first started out, um, people would be sick and they'd be under medical care. And this was in the 1890s and the 1910s and the 1920s. Mm. And there, there weren't as many drugs and surgery wasn't as safe as it was, as it is today. And people would get all the help they could possibly get from the medical profession and still not be doing well. They would still be sick. They might even be dying. And so they heard about this strange thing where the chiropractor did something as a new thing, and they'd go try and a chiropractic care, and the chiropractor would check their spine and give them an adjustment, and their health would come back. Well, this was a shocking thing. As a matter of fact, it, it kind of upset some people. Like, chiropractic was saying that medicine wasn't any value, and chiropractic was the answer to health. Okay. But the problem was they didn't get that benefit until they'd already lost their health, and in many cases they were on the, you know, near death and they would come back and recover. Well, chiropractors said, that's great, we can help the people that medicine doesn't help, except after doing that for a couple decades, chiropractors also noticed the phenomenon that people who got under care also wanted their, their kids or their neighbors or their friends to get their spines checked, and we would find out that people who weren't particularly sick, if they got their spines checked, would start to be even healthier than they had been before they got their spine checked. So the typical patient to chiropractic, still to this day, a lot of time comes into a chiropractor's office saying, I've had this problem, the medical doctor says they can't help me, it's all in my head or whatever, can you help me? And we say, well, let me check your spine, let me adjust your subluxation. And lo and behold, their life turns around and they start being healthier. But chiropractors have promoted the idea that if chiropractic care can be that good to you when your health is already lost, let's think about the possibility of you come in to recover your health, why don't you bring your children and let us check them so that they keep their health or so that their health evolves along with them and they stay healthy. And mm -hmm. chiropractic has literally evolved from a crisis intervention of people that medicine has failed all the way to saying my ideal patient is someone who doesn't have low back pain and headaches, they have subluxations and I want to correct those subluxations so that they can live a healthy life. I'd rather give someone four decades of health than help them recover miraculously from four decades of sickness. Now, um, <clears throat> do you find that some people come to a chiropractor expecting a quick one adjustment to solve a condition? I do, and, and you know, if you look around the way we sell health care, it's like fast, fast, faster. My treatment's better than your treatment. My treatment's faster than your treatment. 
And people come in with that mindset because that's the mindset of our Western mm. cultures. What we call healthcare is actually disease treatment and intervention. So they come in feeling that, and they say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll give you, I've had a patient go up and say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two adjustments, and if I'm not better by then, I'm going to try something else. But <laughs> the chiropractors have an educational problem to do at that point uh -huh. because I'm not healing you. I'm correcting your subluxation. I'm removing the interference to the function of your nerve system, which allows your body to heal yourself. And the one thing we know about the body is that it's wisdom, this innate intelligence we talk about, has its own timetable. I can't always predict how long it's going to take for you to recover your health. I simply have to convince you to take a chance on the fact that clear from subluxation, you will recover your health, uh -huh. especially if we can keep you clear long enough until you convince yourself that you want to live unsubluxated. And I've been under care since I was two years old, and I haven't been recovering my health that whole time. I've been staying healthy that whole time. And that's where we start really changing the fundamental concept of what health care is. Dr. Koch, I want to thank you so much for being here. I hope you'll come back. We can dis uh, continue this conversation, this discussion, and maybe add some more topics to it. Uh, truly is an honor, sir. Anytime. Thank you. And we'll be right back. So uh, the science of chiropractic is the detection of the interference that Dr. Koch was discussing of that innate intelligence as it flows through primarily the nerves but through other means in the body. And uh, the art of chiropractic is the actual physical adjustment. There are hundreds of techniques that chiropractors have available to them. Some are specific to one single area of the spine and others take a more uh, distant approach. But the objective and the intent of the adjustment is to remove interference of the body that inhibits innate intelligence full expression. And so that's what the kind of care that you will find at uh, Dr. Chris's Natural Remedies.